Hey everyone, this is Al. I am here with an overview of Fascinating Baseball, uh, my new quick playing solitaire cards and dice baseball simulation board game. Uh, Fascinating Baseball really is a, a game uh, designed to help you replay seasons past, uh, but in the future I do hope to introduce uh, fictional support to uh, much like the Commissioner expansion and Fast Drive Football. Uh, what I'm going to show you today are the game components and tell you a little bit about how the game works under the hood. But first, let me start by saying this game really is an homage to games like Pennant Race, those games that let you get through a bunch of games um, a season as quickly and uh, efficiently as possible, but still have fun while you're doing it. This is not going to be a game for people who enjoy uh, rolling for every at bat. Um, but it might find a place on your table if you need, if you want to supplement um, another game to play maybe games for the other teams where you don't want to just roll for a result or a final score, but maybe have something just a little bit deeper. And games in Fascinating Baseball only take anywhere from, say, five to ten minutes once you understand the system and get it down. And trust me, it's a very, very easy and, and quick game to play. No complicated rules. Um nothing crazy. You just get in there with your score sheet and you go. Um, and speaking of score sheets, I should probably just start out by showing you the score sheets because that'll really give you a good idea of the types of information you can track and the types of stats you can keep with Fast Inning Baseball. So you'll see that we have a standard standard score sheet here, four games on one side. It's double-sided, so you got four games on four, four games on either side. So eight games on one piece of paper, You'll track the team names, how many runs they score per inning, a little scratch pad over here to track hits and errors, and then when the game's over, you write in the final numbers for runs, hits, and errors. And you can also track the pitchers, uh, their decision, um, how many innings they pitched, as well as um, writing their grades for the game. So really, that's the, that's the meat of the game, is get to a final score, get your pitcher decisions, and uh, move on to the next game, and get through a series, get through a week. Um, and start to see the trends and start to have the storylines emerge. Now, if you uh, wanted to have a little bit more narrative to maybe build up a few more storylines, you can also track information about the batters and fielders. You can track home runs, clutch hits, key hits, uh, web gems, and errors. And also a space over here for notes. So you can track a little bit more, but basically everything I've talked about that's it. You're not going to get uh, any more deeper stats than that. Um, it's more focused on, again, getting into a final score, understanding uh, the ebb and flow of the game, who came through in the clutch, and maybe which pitchers dominated. So yeah, so that's that's kind of the, the overview and the, the, um, the scope of the game, the vision for the game. Uh, you know, harken back to games like Pennant Race, and think about watching a condensed game online. And that's the experience you'll get with Fast Inning Baseball. This is a bound book of the cross era game day charts. Um, I like to bind mine, um, and the instructions are on the website for how to do that if you want to at fastinningbaseball.com. If not, it's really just four sheets you need to print out. You don't need to print out the cover. Um, you can just print out one, two, three, four, four individual sheets or two double-sided sheets, and you are on your way, you are playing the game. Let me talk about the game book. If you've played fast drive football, this will be completely familiar to you, and you can probably skip this video altogether, but I'll talk about it anyway. The one change from fast drive football is there's no third column. Two columns, in, you're out, you get your result. It was really nice that I was able to um, condense it and make the game even faster by having one less check per roll. If you're not familiar with any of my games, you're basically rolling three dice and you're going to read them in ascending order on these main charts. So if you rolled a, let's say a six, a one, and a four, that's not a six, 14. It's a one, four, six, because you're going to read them in ascending order. Then you're going to see if it, if the book asks you a question, you're going to answer it. And if it's yes, you'll read this result. If it's no, you'll read this result. And if it has no questions, you'll just get the result immediately, nice and quick, and you move on. The results that you can get are sort of um, grouped in a narrative fashion. So everything in the lead die one section is where the pitcher qualities really come into play. So when you roll a lead die one, think about um, the camera 
really focusing on on the pitcher on the mound and and um, you know whether he's able to execute or not. Lead die twos is setting up for a possible big hit home run. Lead die three is where all of your web gems and errors are going to come from. And finally, lead die four through six are your clutch at bats, sort of the the beating heart of this game. The um, the drama results, as we saw here, this ga these game day drama results come from triple ones, triple twos, or triple threes. Triple fours, fives, and sixes are all clutch at bats as well. Um, when you score runs, uh, it's as easy as seeing the result that says run score, and then you're going to come to page two and you're going to roll on the run score table. And depending on the scoring quality of the team, you roll on that column, you find out how many runs were scored. If you want, go ahead and roll on the finder column for the batting team and see who had the key hit that inning to, to generate those runs. For home runs, it's sort of the same. It's sort of the same uh, process. If you do end up with a home run, grab your grab your card, roll on the home run finder, see who hit the home run. Again, none of those steps of finding the players are necessary, but it really does make a difference playing a baseball game, um, having that connection to the players and having that um, narrative sort of build up in your mind. Because it's fun watching inning over inning, maybe one player getting multiple home runs, things like that. So um, try it out if, if, if you like. I think it's a pretty cool, it's a pretty cool mechanism. Um, let's see, errors um, are based on team ratings, but it's gonna come up um, with a notation that says if the decider die comes up bullet, the offensive team, the batting team will score a run. It's pretty much just keying off a fact of baseball for the past hundred years where uh, just about every year, half of the, half of all the errors turn into runs. So um, it was a real cool uh, mechanism to get into the game. So we have run score, we have home runs, we have errors, all which generate runs. And by the way, when you get a home run result, you're just going to roll down here on the home run table. There's a chance for a multi home run inning. And I didn't mention even with the run score result, there's always a chance for a big inning as well, where you're going to get multiple runs. And for any time that you do have runs or you know no runs in an inning, you can always determine how many hits occurred. So if you really want to track down to that level of detail, not only track runs and errors, but also hits per inning, you can do that. Um, as a matter of fact, some of the no runs results have a little notation after them to say how many run, how many hits occurred in that inning, although there were no runs. Let's talk about clutch at bats because that's the coolest part of the game. When you when you get a clutch at bat result, it means there's runners on base, and you're going to need to see if the batter comes through in the clutch or not. Each batter has a clutch rating. They have a finder rating as well, a finder column um, range. You're going to roll two dice. You're going to find the batter who's sort of the batter of the moment. You're going to look at their clutch grade. You're going to grab your other card for the pitching team, check out the pitcher's grade, and you're going to cross-reference the pitcher's grade with the hitter's grade. So, for example, if the pitcher's a B plus, the batter's a C, it's a 54 is the target. So if the batter rolls a 54 or higher, they, they got a key hit, they got a clutch hit, sorry, and runs are going to score, and you go back to the run score procedure. If they don't hit their target, no run score, one hit in the inning, and read the narrative down here to find out um, what happened. Again, it's like watching, it's like watching that highlight um, play out in real time. So those are all the results. The only thing that I haven't shown you is the extra innings chart. This was a late addition to the development of the game. Thank you to my um, play testers. You know who you are who came up with this idea. But having a specialized extra inning chart really does help um, get through the possible slog of extra innings. So it's a really cool addition to the game. It did come in late in development, and I think it was sort of like the um, the cherry on top. It really uh, it really makes extra innings something not to to see as a burden anymore. You can you can get through them a lot quicker and a lot smoother. I think that's it. It's like I said, it is there's not a lot to explain with fast inning baseball. A lot of R and D and testing went into this game to make sure that it plays fast, that it plays fun, and that you want to keep playing. Uh, the feedback from the testers has been overwhelmingly positive. Um, thanks to everyone out there who has given me advice and help along the way. Really excited to get this released. 
and I will make some videos soon showing gameplay. Uh, so anyway, that's an overview of Fast Inning Baseball. Let me know if you have any questions, and I will talk to you guys later.